racing around in front of us at the moment. Brooke, focused, determined, and ready. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would ask you to be respectful for both national anthems. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join in if you wish. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody can do that better. And now, it's the main event, the fight of the night. Eddie Hart in association with Yvonne Michel now proudly presents 12 rounds of boxing for IBF Waterweight Championship of the World. Spotify. Scott's men's winner, StubHub, Scarborough Group, and we buy anyhouse.com. We are live on Sky Sports, and we continue to bring you the very best ringside seat in the business. And at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the millions of viewers joining us around the world to the great Still City of Chelsea. All the officials have been appointed by the International Boxing Federation and Association for the British Boxing Board of Control. Supervisor Alistair Hayes and Robert Smith and from the IBM from Phoenix, Arizona, USA, Aaron Kaiser. Timekeeper at the bell is Jamie Carpatrick and scoring the contest on the 10-point must system, our three judges. From the United Kingdom, Michael Alexander. From the USA, Adelaide Bird. And from Canada, Benoit Roussel. Ladies and gentlemen, when the bell rings and the action begins, the man in the middle, the man in charge from Twickenham, England, is Mr. Marcus McDonald. And now, ladies and 
Rachel, away we go. Introducing to you the challenger fighting out of the red corner. When the blue trunks trim with red and white, weight in the 10 stone, 6 pounds, 2 ounces, 27 fight record, 25 wins, 17 inside the scheduled distance, and just two defeats. He comes to the ring as a former WBA International NABA Waterway Champion from St. Emile, Quebec, Canada. He will in the 10 stone, 6 pounds, 5 ounces. He is undefeated. 35 contests, 35 wins, 24 inside the scheduled distance. Ladies and gentlemen, during his professional career, he is the outright winner and holder of the Lord Lonsdale's Challenge Belt, making his third defense. He is the winning. You know what I expect. Ella progresses at all times. A fine last clutch of watch your edge. Keep it clean. Any questions? Let's go to work. So much frustration then has been building up for Kelbrook since that last outing against Frankie Gavin back in May. The rib injury that put pay to the Diego Chavez fight. And now he gets to get rid of it against Kevin Bizier, the massive underdog from Canada, looking to become only the third Canadian-born welterweight world champion ever. The odds stacked against him. And the body language from the challenger, not great either. A laid-back character, naturally, but that is not the face of a man who is expecting to come in and do a job, is it? Let's see if Brooke can do a job here on the man who is his mandatory challenger, and a man who's never been floored, incidentally. A man who's boxed in a couple of World Amateur Championships, holds a win over Bradley Skeet in the amateurs as well, but making a huge step up here in his bid to become a world welterweight champion. I just think his style is just too straightforward to really make an impact on Kelbrook. There's nothing clever about what he does. He's tough, he's got good determination, he's brave enough. He's done well so far in his career, but there's nothing special about him, you know, there's, there's nothing... doesn't do anything unexpected. So hopefully he can put up a show and go home at least with his pride intact. Oh, a big side right hand has rocked it already and he followed it up straight away. Brook lands another one as well. Early warning signs there for Kevin Bizier about Kells Brook, Kell Brook's power, which you heard Johnny Nelson talking about. He is a hurtfully powerful puncher at this weight. Especially when it's a stationary head that's coming straight towards them and just adding more power to the punches. I mean, his timing is spot on. I mean, already I'm asking questions about the IBF's mandatory contenders. The last one was woeful, and uh, without being insulting, uh, Bizier doesn't look any better. We've got a special fighter here. We want to see him in against his special opponents. Good way he likes in the first round here. You can't miss him with those rights around the back of the guard. Can't miss him with his jabs either. Forward still busy. Yet yeah, brave as we thought it would be, trying to come forward, trying to get his punches off. 
but uh, Brook looking so sharp, looking in a different league this early. Well, he got his shot, Jim, just going back to that, and, you know, boxing politics, we started talking about that, we'll be here all night, but uh, late last year he beat an unbeaten fighter in Frederick Lawson, went to Chicago and beat the Ghanaian, who is Chicago-based, broke his jaw as well, and that was a big surprise, because Bizio had been brought over as the opponent, the guy that was supposed to lose that one. Lawson was the man that was going to be pushed. That got him his number one spot with the IBF. He is not ranked anywhere in the top 15 by the other world sanctioning bodies, which I think perhaps says it all. But there is toughness and determination about him, but Brook is just using him for target practice here. Um, Brook is, is brilliant at the moment, just doing as he pleases. He's a time and spot on the job. Right hand, left hook, everything that he, he tries is working. But what I'm thinking, Nick, if this was a voluntary defence, we'd be slating it. I mean, Brook has to fight him, it's a mandatory, but he looks a different league. All right, have some relax, come on. Like I say, it's going to be tough three or four rounds. Yeah, we can take it in this game. You're going to be nice, right? Corners, ten seconds. Well, Bezier has to keep his hands like that, keep the chin down and the hands up and see if he can walk forward and get close enough Second to down, make some sort two. of impact. He's not going to do it cleverly. Interesting observation there from Dominic Engel in Kelbrook's corner. He thinks it's going to be a tough three or four rounds because Bizier will soak up punishment. They obviously respect his durability. Well, just, just he's looking, I'm sorry, Nick, he's looking a bit livelier in the second round here. Maybe he's had a, a little rocket back in the corner. Nah, terrific stuff from Brook. Yeah, Brook put him straight back in his place. That uppercut was wicked from Brook. And then out of range again. Yeah, a lot of blood coming from the nose here. Oh, Kevin Bizier. Out of range again. Well, he's pushing forward, but he's just paying the price, isn't he? Landed a decent right hand over the top there. Yeah, well, he's certainly looking brighter, more ambitious in the second round. Taking his bumps and coming through them. I mean, when you're expecting a tough night, you can cope with it. But, uh, making mistakes now. Well, his, his leads are just so crude, aren't they? He's wide out to counters, looking to land the uppercut there. But a bit more variety in his work here from Bizier with that uppercut. No, I just think, I think he should tighten his defence as he's done now. Get the chin down, come forward, and hope he can draw some of the steam out of Kelbrook. Has Kelbrook taken this lightly? Is he in the shape he should be in? Oh, yeah, he's just wobbled shot. again on the counter. And Brook is on him straight away. The legs have gone and for the first time in his career. Kevin Bizier goes down. A look at his corner. This is a man that is just completely, as you say, Jim, outclassed. He lunged in. He got countered. And Brook can move in for the finish here because Bizier is coming apart. The legs have gone again. I don't think he was done from the first one. He's looked at his corner, said something. Doesn't know where he is. All over the place. Stopped. Just absolutely battered. Kelbrook, ten months of inactivity. And it's over in around four and a half minutes. Well, he calls himself the special one and you can't argue with him. I mean, that was another special performance. Didn't put a foot wrong. Everything he did was precision. It was terrific. He didn't make the match. The match was thrust on him. Nobody gave Busy a chance. Uh, he was number one contender, as uh, Jojo Dan was. But hopefully, Brooks' next fight will be either Amir Khan, which I hardly see happening, or someone with a name, Robert Guerrera, you know, Andrew Berto, someone who, if he does a job on them, he will raise eyebrows across the pond. The people that he's beating since he became champion, no one has taken any notice of that. He needs a name on his, on, on his record, and he needs to do a job on that name. He's capable of doing it. And, and that is the point, isn't it, Jim? This is an elite fighter we're looking at here, one of the highest class operators. We need to see just how good he is against some of the biggest and best names in the division, and even the division above. Yeah, it was quality again tonight. 
concentration, spot on. It, it took him about one clean punch that I can remember. And uh, he, his own punching was solid, perfectly timed, and you can see he's just knocked the fight out of, of, of a good, solid fighter, but uh, not uh, number one material. Well, he, he knew, didn't he? Said. I mean, you could see when he just sat on the floor here. And, and again, you know, nobody should criticise Kevin Vizio, who's done the best he can, but he just was completely out of his depth here. Absolutely ridiculous that he would have been a number one contender for any of the sanctioning bodies. I mean, a man who's not rated in any other body and he's number one in the IBF, you have to ask questions. Not his fault. Yeah, and not you his can't fault, take not it away. Not, you can't take it away from Kelbrook. Mandatories are thrust upon you, and he's honoured two of those already. But really, so that we can fully praise this guy and know, find out just what he's capable of, we need him in with the big names. And I don't know that the big names are avoiding him, Nick. I just think that uh, he, he maybe doesn't have the profile required. But a big name, do a job on a big name next time out, and that profile will be where you want it to be. And then you can start looking at Pacquiao if he's still boxing and uh, people, you know, Thurman, who, who, whoever. Whoever, the big fights that we want to see him in, and he wants to be in. Maybe the step up to Super Welter as well. That might be something that's uh, being considered. It's certainly been talked about. But as you say, Jim, he needs a massive name. He needs a legitimate champion or a former champion. Because, as you say, his biggest night came last August or August 2014 now. That's how long ago it was that he beat Sean Porter as, Bru as uh, Bizier just completely falls apart all over. He, he, he's, he's just dealt with two mandatories with ridiculous ease. And then Frankie Gavin sandwiched between them. He needs bigger challenges. And he deserves bigger challenges because this really is a very special talent indeed. Yeah, a special talent coming to his peak. So we want the peak fights for him. Ladies and gentlemen, timekeeper Jamie Kirkpatrick records a time of two minutes and 15 seconds of the second round. Your winner. By technical count out. And still, the IBF Walter Lloyd champion of the world. The special one, Kel. It was never in doubt, was it? The bookies knew it, these fans knew it, we knew it. And once that first bell went, Kevin Bizier knew it as well. Kel Brook, just in a different class tonight, retains his IBF belt, wearing that with pride. But really, this is a night that nobody really needs to talk about too much. We need to talk about the future. What next for Kel Brook? Where does he go? That's what we're interested in, because we are looking had a really, really special talent here. Kel, congratulations. Totally dominant. You looked in a really spiteful mood in there tonight. You know, first of all, I want to thank all the Sheffield people for coming out. You know, we've left them too long. It's been, it's been a long time since we're back here. I want to thank you all for coming out and supporting me. Without you, it wouldn't have been on me. There'll be a bit of criticism about the match. He was a mandatory, so that's not your fault. But did you feel the class above Kevin Bizier tonight? You know, I did, I've been training a long, long time. People don't realise what goes on behind closed doors. You know, I've missed my daughter's birthday, weddings, you know, all this goes off, you know, to, um, to dedicate myself to, to this sport. But I love, I love it, obviously, because we get nights like this. You know, but I, I wear, I wear uh, levels above Mr. Bizier tonight, but it was my, my mandatory, you know, a guy who I needed to fight also get stripped, and we've worked too hard for it, to get to this uh, point, baby, so we had to take it. Is that a good way to get the frustration of the last 10 months out of your system with injury and inactivity again? You know, I, w I wanted, a, I wanted a, to warm into it and have an all-out war for your guys. But, you know, uh, he couldn't stand up to it, you know, I, I can it really hard, so I caught him with a shot, and that's all she wrote. But I want them big fights, like we've been saying. I've got, I've got me mandatory out of the way. Ed, uh, we're going to pull up now and, and, and get the big fight. Do you feel that you hit hard enough to challenge anybody? in the world's weight division on this planet? Even weights above, you know, I've got, I've got power what can knock, knock, you know, heavyweights out, you know, and uh, that's, what, that, that's what we've got to do now, make a big fight, 
you know, and I need, I need that bit between my teeth where I'm training really hard, even though I do. But, you know, I've got a threat on my hands, you know, what I can, what's going to real drive me. Let's have a word with promoter Eddie. Eddie, that's the third title defence now. Two of those were mandatories, but are you under a little bit of pressure now to deliver that big career-defining fight? Sure, yeah, we, we like the pressure, and that's what Kel needs. We had to fight Bizier tonight, or he'd be stripped of the title. But it's what he does to these fighters. Kel Brook is a beast. I believe he's the best welterweight in the world, but we've got to prove it. You can only prove it so hard, far against a fighter like Bizier, no disrespect to him. He needs to prove it against the elite fighters in the world. Injuries have ruled him out, setbacks have ruled him out. Now he's got a clean bill of health, we're going to move forward. We're going to land that big fight, we have to. No one wants to fight Kel Brook, he's that good. But he has the belt, we're going to have to pull up the money, and we're going to have to bring him to Sheffield. If we have to go to America, so be it. But I want to bring the big fights here to Sheffield. They've supported him for his whole career, and Kel's desperate to bring the big fights here to Bramall Lane. If we have to travel, we'll do it, but let's do all we can to bring it to Sheffield. So putting you on the spot, who's top of your hit list? Who will you be ringing Monday morning? Well, like you said, he can go through the weights, but while he's got that belt, let's unify the division. You now, whether it's Vargas, whether it's Garcia, you know, I love the Timothy Bradley fight. He's fighting Manny Pacquiao. There's so many options. Miguel Cotto came calling with HBO recently. He'd walk to New York for that fight. But right now, we want to unify the division. He's got the ability to do it. I think pound for pound, the best fighter in Britain right now. Sheffield, he's doing him proud. And I'll tell you what, everything that he's been through over the last 18 months, there's many people that wouldn't even be standing here tonight. I promise you that. But he's shown real heart. He's training harder than ever. He's going to have a couple of weeks off with the family, straight back in the gym, end of July, Bramall Lane. Let's do it. So, Kel, this is your stage. This is your platform. Who's, who do you want to fight next? Who's the one name on your list that you want Eddie to bring over? I love that green belt, that WBC. Danny Garcia, I'd love that fight. Timothy Bradley's fighting Pacquiao. I'd love Bradley. You know, I think Pacquiao is on his way out now. Um, then you've got Porto Thurman fighting. Any of them, any of them in that heart will fight because they're very exciting fights. And then you would go up through the weights if those fights couldn't come off? You know, eventually, but you know, I'm world champion. Let's unify the division, like Eddie said. And in time, we will move up. Just to work with Dominic Ingle. Dominic, who do you want Kel to fight now? There's a lot of pressure on Eddie Hearn on my uh, right-hand shoulder to bring a big fight. So who do you want Kel to fight? I don't, I don't envy Eddie's job, you know. He's, uh, he's faced with the task of, you know, matching one of the hardest punch, punching world to eight. And, you know, for me, I don't think people want to take these fights. But, you know, any, any of the top names, Garcia, uh, Bradley, a do for a start, you know, if you get them in the mix. But, you know, whatever comes along, Kel will get him out. Two rounds for this guy. You know, he's trained 10 months. He made easy work of him, and he needs to make easy work of them guys. But what he needs, he needs a test now. Easter eggs tomorrow, Kel. Yeah, I've got them piled up. You know, we're, we're doing an Easter on it morning with my daughters. So we've hit, we've hit some. 